Why do you need the question, what do you mean by that? Okay. So, why do you need the question, why do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Well, that question comes from um, the Colombo tactic, which is a tactic that we teach at Standard Reason that Reg uh, coined, uh, coined the term Colombo tactic. And the Colombo tactic has multiple questions involved in it, but the two, first two questions are, what do you mean by that? And how did you come to that conclusion? So what do you mean by that? That question is asking about what a person believes. How did you come to that conclusion is asking the question why they believe it. So the first question is what do they believe? Second question is why they believe it. And um, the reason why I think you need the question, what do you mean by that? Well, there's lots of reasons. Number one is um, it's an engaging way to have a conversation. So instead of you just lecturing someone, you're engaging them and it makes the conversation more interesting for them. Number two, you're asking for their opinion, which people love to give their opinion. They feel valued and cared for and they feel important. Um, you know, number three, people love to hear their own voice and, uh, you know, share their own thoughts. And so um, for them to just be able to have the freedom to speak and stuff like that, it's going to be um, valuable to them. That'll, of course, endear them to you. Um, uh, I think another another benefit would be that uh, when you ask the question, what do you mean by that? It can buy you some extra time in the conversation. And what I mean by that is if you're in a conversation and someone raises a challenge or, an, you know, raises an objection and you don't know exactly how to handle that, that objection at that moment. If you say to them, well, what do you mean by that? Like maybe they're challenging you with a problem of evil. You're like, well, what do you mean by evil? You know? And now they're going to take a few minutes to define for you what they mean by evil or explain to you what they mean by evil. And what that gives you an opportunity to do is, you know, catch your breath, collect your thoughts, listen carefully to what they're saying, pay attention to their words, you know, and then maybe something they'll say will trigger your memory about something that you've learned about this subject, or maybe they'll just give you more information and by the more information they provide you, you'll have a better understanding of their view and you'll be able to, you know, perhaps respond to them. Okay. But ultimately, I think the, the, the reason why you need the question, what do you mean by that? Is because it helps you to understand what precisely they believe. And you want to know what, what they believe precisely so that you can respond directly to what their challenge is and not waste your time answering a question that they're not asking. In fact, that's precisely what's happening here. Like I'm seeing these questions being posted on uh, my phone and my iPad. And um, in some cases, I'm like, I'm not sure what they mean by this question because I don't have you, the person right in front of me to say, well, what do you mean by, you know, um, like that previous question? What do you mean by uh, uh, should you, if you don't know a person's religious affiliation, should you not take their advice from them? Well, it just depends on what do you mean by it? like, what do you? You mean uh, by advice, do you mean like religious advice or, you know, moral advice or, you know, so again, this question is so critical. You want to understand what it is they hold and believe so that you can respond to them. Also, and this is a huge mistake that Christians and non-Christians make, is that they commit what's called a straw man fallacy. And this is an embarrassing error that unfortunately happens too often, but that is very um, not easily, but it's, it's, it can be fairly easily uh, avoided. And a straw man fallacy is when you take a person's view and then you misrepresent their view in such a way where their view looks now more foolish, more stupid, and a lot easier to attack. And so instead of attacking the actual view that they hold, you attack this straw man version, this fake, lame, stupid version of their view, and you, do, you knock that down and defeat it. Now, of course, they're going to say, well, great, you just attacked a view that I don't hold. <laughs> and they're like, you know, it sounds like you're not even listening to what I'm saying. You're attacking a view I don't hold. It sounds like you're not even talking to me, you know. So the question, what do you mean by that, helps you to avoid committing a straw man fallacy. It helps you to understand their view so you don't misrepresent their view and so that you can respond precisely to what their view is, okay? All right, so anyways, I think... That's 
um, the primary reason or several reasons why I think that question is, is essential.